guys, welcome back to the comic book lowdown. I'm Wellington, and uh, it's Saturday, so that means I'm doing another pool week video. Uh, as you guys can see, another new environment, just like my previous two videos. Uh, this is actually my room now. Uh, you see those footballs in the back on the wall. Uh, that wasn't my choice. That's how we moved in. I uh, didn't really want them there, but it's pretty hard to take them off, so I decorated my room with uh, my own things. I got a bunch of my, uh, I got my whole superhero wall over there, right over there. I actually, I'll actually show you guys. You guys can see that pretty good. I got Dread, the Avengers, uh, some Spider-Man, uh, Minimum Carnage, Daredevil, Wolverine, my drawing. Got Spider Man. Yeah, so that's it for my uh, superhero wall. And then I got some posters in the back, as you guys can see. Um, sorry about the shaky camera. It's uh, my phone that I record with. But, um, anyways, I'm sorry about my voice, too. A little scratchy. But, um, anyways, I got four books lined up for you guys. And I'm going to start with an online book. Uh, from last week, didn't read it last week, a lot of people were talking about it though, and so I got a Green Arrow, issue 17, um, I'm not the biggest Green Arrow fan, I only really know Green Arrow because of, uh, the show Arrow, that's my first, uh, uh, my first encounter with Green Arrow, so, these, a lot of the characters I'm not, uh, familiar with, like uh, Jax and Naomi and Mr. Emerson. So really the characters in this book besides uh, Ollie. But uh, I, I still managed to really like the issue. Um, the art in it, it's pretty good. But uh, it's kind of like sometimes I don't know what's going on. Because uh, of the way that they make the art where sometimes they put everything in black and white but um they put what they what you want to be focused on what they want you to focus on they they uh make it green so uh sometimes it's hard to tell what you're actually looking at because uh everything isn't its color that it's supposed to be but other than that I really had no problems with it uh I like the story it seems like I'm getting into a story that's been building up but um from what I hear is that uh, the first 16 issues before this are, uh, they, they kind of, I've heard that this issue, issue 17, can play as issue 1 for the new 52 of Green Arrow. So uh, I'm not too worried about where I am in the, in the storyline. But uh, anyways, I really liked it, uh, Jeff Lemire writing. Uh, I think it's a good voice for Ollie again. I'm not very familiar with Green Arrow besides the show, so I'm not really wanting to say what who has a good voice for him or anything like that, but uh, I'll definitely try to pick up uh, issue 2, so I can, or not issue 2, issue 18, <laughs> so I can review that because um, I did like this one. But uh, anyways, now get to the books from this week, starting off with uh, Scarlet Spider, issue 14, and uh... I love the covers on all the books that I got this week. They're all great covers, you know, put it sideways, still works out. But um, I wish I could say the same for the story in this. This is actually the first issue of Scarlet Spider that I've been kind of disappointed with. Uh, where we left off last issue, where when Kane actually died, um, I thought, like, what could they do next? I was very excited. I was very pumped up for this issue. And uh, throughout this issue, it was kind of like the dialogue was hard for me to follow between... Uh, in this issue, Kane is kind of uh, having a battle with his inner monster as he's, you know, dead. And uh, he's kind of coming to a realization, the real realization. I mean, he knows it himself, but he's finally accepting it that he is, and what they say, not man, but spider. And, uh, but the whole dialogue between him and his monster self uh, is kind of, like, hard to follow because it's kind of, I, I, I don't really know. It was a hard issue to read, 
is what I'm trying to get through. And same thing with the Aris Elisa. Um, she's like trying to run away from the the Los Lobos, and um, her dialogue with other people besides the the Lobos um, is kind of hard to understand. I I get the feeling that she's her psychic powers are affecting the people around her, but uh, I'm not quite sure. So uh, the the writing in here, Chris Yost, he's a great writer. He's been phenomenal on Scarlet Spider thus far, but uh, this issue was kind of let down. Um, Art-wise, I think uh, Koi Fan was actually more consistent in this issue than uh, than he has been. Some issues, or at least a lot of issues that I've seen of Scarlet Spider where he's the artist on them, uh, they're very good, but then every once in a while there's a, uh, uh, you know, it seems a little rushed. This issue you seem pretty consistent throughout the whole issue so um hopefully we can get next issue a pick up in the story um and, and uh, everything like that and also continuing on this uh on this consistent art but uh another thing about this i didn't really like where this issue left us for next issue but i'm really hoping that chris Yos knows what he's doing here and uh can deliver us a a really great issue for the next issue, issue 15. So anyways, uh, Scarlet Spider issue 14, kind of a letdown, but uh, of course I'm not going to drop the book because this is the first letdown I've had with it, and it's 14 issues in, so um, you know, every, you always, you can be allowed one bad issue. Uh, next I got more DC, got Deathstroke issue 17, uh, Justin Jordan, Edgar Salazar still writing, or writing and being the artist um another great issue of deathstroke uh great voice for slade wilson um awesome action throughout this this book um if you really are looking for a good action book i definitely uh recommend deathstroke because this whole book is all about uh these japanese uh clan of samurais like ninjas really not samurais they're called the Susada, so like Sukata clan. I can't really say it, but um, they're all they want to kill Deathstroke. They got this mission, uh, like uh, they've been hired to kill Deathstroke because of Deathstroke killing Jenny or Jenner Collins. I'm not familiar with Jenner Collins. It might have happened in an earlier issue that I didn't read. Deathstroke saying that he didn't, and um. There's a lot of there's a big battle between uh, the son of the Susada clan and the uh, master of the Susada clan, Master Susada, and um, you know the son is wanting to let go of the old ways that's been that they've had for the past six hundred years, while the father wants to keep everything the same, and uh, and Deathstroke is thrown in the mix of all of this and. It's just a lot of action, a lot of, you know, the the story seems to be picking up pretty nicely. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a long story arc, but uh, the story is picking up nicely already. Uh, there's a, We're left off in a great place. The art is absolutely amazing. There are great full-page spreads throughout this book. Um, and yeah, so I definitely suggest and recommend uh, reading Deathstroke from uh, issue 15 onward because Justin Jordan writing, great voice for Slade, and uh, Edgar Salazar on art, great artist, and uh, can't want anything more out of a Destro comic book. <coughs> and last, I got Batman, physically, I've got Batman issue 17, and this is, of course, everybody knows the end of Death of the Family, and I've heard somebody, I've heard one or two people say that they didn't like where it left off, that it was kind of dis disappointing for them. Me personally, I absolutely loved it. Um, I had no problems with this issue. I thought Joker, his plan unfolded very nicely. Uh, you know, it, with Joker, it's always to prove a point. It's never, Joker kills and kills and kills, but he's always trying to prove his like, jumbled up points to Batman and uh, he's 
this is no different, but it's a very crazy Joker, like we all are, you know, we all see, but, um, he pushes Batman to a new limit in this, and there's some really cool stuff that happens throughout this issue, and, uh, it's just, I thought it was a really good wrap-up for Death of the Family, we're left off with, of course, we're gonna have more Joker stories in the future, not in the near future, but, uh, definitely in the, in the future, um, Snyder did a great job of, of writing this final issue of this story arc, uh, like he's done time and time again with Batman, uh, just the art by Greg Capullo, absolutely amazing, fits Batman very well, I, I love this Batman, this, uh, this drawing, this, you know, the depiction of Batman throughout this, from the Court of Owls, which is absolutely amazing, and throughout this Death of the Family, absolutely amazing. Capullo's got a great feel for uh, the characters and how they should look, and uh, it's just a great issue. I definitely recommend, like everybody else does, you know, read some Snyder Batman because it uh, it's all very, uh, very cool read. Uh, it's very complex, and Snyder gives you your money's worth throughout uh, all his issues. But anyways, that's my video for books this week. And, uh, you know, check out my other videos. I, I like putting out videos on a consistent basis, even though I haven't been able to for a while for moving. But it seems like I'm settling in pretty nicely now. So I can finally get back to my uh, free digital comic reviews. I haven't done those in like three weeks. So I really need to get back to that. And uh, I've, uh, I've got some stuff that I'm reading now, some trades that I borrowed from my girlfriend, that I, I, one that I bought for her, and that's Daredevil, some Ed Brubaker Daredevil, and I've got two trades of this story arc, and it's looking really good so far, so I can't wait to review those, and uh, yeah, so that's my video for you guys, I'm Wellington signing off with the comic book lowdown, and I'll see you guys next time.